what Adam Aaron did the other day, the CEO, was brilliant. He's growing the company. He has shares that he can offer uh, to be able to really buy pretty much any theater in the world or any chain. Uh, and I think he's going to do that. Adam is a fantastic manager, but what he really knows how to do is, is run a stock. And it's simply brilliant. That's Kramer with us yesterday on Tech Check talking about AMC and the prospect or the likelihood, perhaps, of them eventually buying a rival chain like IMAX. Uh, to respond to that, perhaps, let's bring in Rich Gelfand, the CEO of IMAX, who joins us this morning. Richard, it's always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be here, Carl. Thanks for having me. So I love... All right, so we're, um, we're in some... <laughs> no, I was going to say, we're in some extraordinary times, and I'm, I'm sure you heard that bite. I mean, what's your, what is your reaction to something like that? Yeah, I mean, IMAX isn't for sale. Adam's a very good friend of mine. We talk all the time. But I do think Jim made a really excellent point that he's got all that cash and he's got lots of things to do with it. And, you know, no one's talked about, you know, who benefits besides Adam and AMC, but they're one of our largest partners in the world. We have a backlog of 100 theaters set to open with them. Now that they're flush with cash, part of reopening those theaters is renovating them. So that's all really good for IMAX. Their former parent company, Wanda, sold their stake. They're our biggest partner in the world in China. That's good for IMAX. Adam said publicly that he may acquire other, other um, theater chains or other theaters. In fact, I can confirm that um, he's looking at some smaller things to do. And we're included in that, putting IMAX theaters in, in some of those complexes he's looking at. So, you know, whatever's going on in the world and whether, whether it's rational or not, I know that one beneficiary of it has been IMAX and our shareholders. Yeah. I know you were on Squawk a few days ago and you were talking about the summer slate, uh, Quiet Place 2, we got F9, uh, Jungle Cruise, Black Widow, you name it. I wonder, um, at what point do you think we will have enough signposts to know what summer box office is, in fact, going to look like? So I think we have enough, Carl, to know globally what it's going to look like. And as I've said you know, before on CNBC, when you look at the openings in places like China and Japan and Korea, it's consistent with previous years when things were healthy. And in some cases, like China, Chinese New Year's was 30 percent up from its record year. So we have those data points. Unfortunately, North America was slower to reopen. And as you point out, there's a lot of good films to come, but most of those films really come out in the third and fourth quarter. So I think if you're going to look at comps on a per film basis, so like Memorial Day weekend, uh, which just passed, was the best opening since before the pandemic, we're seeing a trend. But if you, the question is really when do things get back to normal in North America, I think it'll be more like the third and fourth quarter. That's when we have Bond, Top Gun Maverick, Dune, a couple Marvel films, that's when it'll really be back to normal. Hey, Richard, it's David. You know, I was listening to you list all the ways you benefit perhaps may and see. Uh, obviously, maybe you want to become a meme stock, too. But when you question whether it's rational, I mean, there is no question. Is there here, Richard? This is irrational. You know your way around fundamental valuation. There's no possible way you can argue that this company was worth, at the open today, $30 billion. That's not enterprise value. That's just equity value. So, David, you know, I know you for a long time. We're, you know, we're not 25 years old. We do know <laughs> what traditional uh, methods of valuation are. And there's no question this does not fit into the traditional valuation box. And I give Adam credit this morning. He even said that in his own statement. However, it's a new world, which I don't pretend to understand. And there are different factors. And um, myself, on my own investment side, I've missed a lot of the trends because of my older ways of thinking about the, these things. But, you know, there are new models, and I can't opine on how they fit or not. <laughs> new but, uh, come on, Richard. Older ways of thinking about things are just what you think about multiple to earnings and multiple to revenues and per theater revenues. And, yeah, those are the old ways, but those are the ways you actually value a business. If you were ever to consider buying it, which, of course, everybody who's buying a share is, in fact, doing, uh, I don't know. I mean, all right, I'm an old guy. You're an old guy. So what? We, we don't get it anymore? Yeah, maybe we don't get it. I mean, 
you know, my um, my stepson said to me at the beginning of the year, you're an idiot. You should put all your money into Tesla. And I said, you know what? It's had such a run. It trades more than so many auto companies put together. There's going to be competition. And he looked at me and laughed and shook his head and said, you just really don't get it. So, you know, and what percentage gain <laughs> did I miss out on, David? So I can't disagree with you based on traditional valuation matrix. It doesn't make sense to me. But the market's in a different place right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.